All right, welcome back. This time we're going to do some more weapons. Now that we've got new enemies, we need new weapons. Um, this one is going to be pretty light on actual new, you know, techniques and and ideas. Uh, this is more of a game design episode than a than a programming episode. Um, so it's actually going to be kind of fun because the way we've set up our weapon system makes it really easy to create new weapons and. We're going to do that, but first, <laughs> always have to eat our vegetables first. Uh, there's a little bug I introduced. It's a small bug where it, by which enemies cannot possibly ever kill you. Uh, <laughs> I created in the last episode. Um, these guys, I can just run through them all, can I? <laughs> they don't hurt me anymore. And if this problem is ringing a bell, it's because it's exactly the problem that I foresaw and fixed with bullets, but I didn't fix it with explosions. So in the bullet behavior, um, we had a, a line that was about checking whether what we hit has a health system or not. And I uh, had the presence of mind to change that so that it looks in its parent objects too. Um, but I didn't do that for explosions. So I'll just show you this line here. It used to say get component, now it says get component and parent. Well, explosions are what actually hurt us when an enemy hits us. Like the enemy itself doesn't do any damage, they just blow up and the, the explosion does the damage. And that bit of code on trigger enter uses get component, should use get component and parent. So it's still curious to me that we didn't hit a bug with the bullets. <laughs> the bullets didn't stop working. I did that fix despite the fact that we weren't seeing a problem. Uh, but with the explosions, we are seeing a problem. Um, I can't really tell you why, but. Uh, hopefully, let's just check that I fixed it. Yep, I can die now. And actually, there's a little thing I noticed um, that we don't have a death effect. If I... Uh, let's get myself shot. I just disappeared, don't I? And it's not hard to understand why that's happening. I don't remember if we ever did have a death effect, but health system has a slot for death effect prefab, and there's nothing there. So let's click that, and... Uh, we actually have something called Big Death Effect, don't we? Uh, oh, I was looking in Scene first. Yeah, Big Death Effect, there we go. Uh, so now we should look good when we die, which is important. Yeah, that's very satisfying. <laughs> Making death fun is important, I think. So, um, I, I guess at some point in the last... Uh, last episode I made a folder for weapons and then didn't put anything in it <laughs> so let's put some stuff in it I'm actually gonna uh, here's a little trick I like to use I will sometimes add a new tab to this window because it's just a bigger window um, so it's easier to see where all our weapons are uh, I'm gonna shrink it a bit so I can see more oh what about that does that help uh, we want Uzi um, railgun shotgun I'm holding down control to not, not to select these and is that it? Do we only have three weapons at the moment? I've just come back from doing a practice of this episode in which we have a lot more than three weapons by the end of it. <laughs> um, so that seems low to me, but okay. Uh, and we're going to make new versions of these. Uh, going to mash some of them up into combo weapons. We're going to make um, better versions of some of them. And... We're pretty well set up to do this. The only thing I don't that isn't great about our current weapon system is if I want to change the damage that any of these things do, I have to create a new bullet. Like we can, it's cool that we can make new bullets. Uh, we have a bullet type, and different um, weapons can be told to use different kinds of bullets. But we have to do that, even just to balance damage. And you can imagine a situation where you know. You've got two weapons, and one of them is doing... Originally, they both do two damage uh, per shot, and then you want to change one to do 2.3 damage, and the other one to do 1.8 damage or something, and now you've got to create a whole new bullet type for that. Um, that's a bit of a pain, and once we have, like, six or seven of these weapons, I want to be just, just scrolling down this list and uh, changing the values. I'm pointing at my screen. I guess that doesn't really help. <laughs> but changing the values on the right here um, really easily without having to look up, oh wait, what bullet does it use, and then what damage does that bullet do. Um, so, all of that will be in weapon behavior. Uh, this is our weapon behavior script, and we're going to give it a new public int for damage. And then when it fires a bullet, right after we create it, we create the bullet here, we'll just do uh, new bullet dot 
get component, because the bullet, the new bullet variable that we defined here is a game object, it's not the actual bullet behavior. So we want to get the bullet behavior, and then we'll tell the bullet behavior, your damage is our damage. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Um, except that, of course, because we created a new variable and weapon behavior, it's going to default to zero. Um, so we actually want to find the master weapon prefab, the one that all the others are variants of. And I'm just going to set a default damage of one. Um, and so what weapons do we have that don't do one damage? The railgun. Um, our railgun was uh, is a slightly awkward weapon, and we're going to fix that this episode, <laughs> because it it's too good. And so that's why I gave it five ammo, is <laughs> because it was so crazy good. And that's not a very happy compromise, because now it feels overly limited. Um, really, I think the, the, the design problem at the core of it is that it, it fulfills two different roles too well. It is both the high damage single target weapon, like if you want to defeat a, a guard, it's the best thing to use because it does five damage per shot. Uh, so in, uh, it fires twice a second, so in one second you can kill a guard um, from any range. So it's like the sniper rifle, and it also, also penetrates uh, enemies uh, infinitely. Uh, and so it's great for lines of enemies and mobs. It's got a sort of crowd control feature, and it's a really good high da damage. And it shouldn't be both, because if you make it both, you have to add a ridiculous restriction like only five shots. <laughs> so let's just make the damage. So the damage has already gone down to one because of uh, what we just did. Um, I think it should be about two. And then we can give it 20 ammo, which is not a huge amount, but it's now it's a sort of solid all-rounder. It's going to... Two damage means it kills a standard enemy in one shot, and so it's still great for those. Uh, got a good amount of ammo. Um... And yeah, we've recently buffed our shotgun. Um, I can't remember what episode we did that in, but it's it's fairly good now in terms of it. it um, well, actually, let's do some testing and find out if that's the case. While I'm here, I also want to change the shape of our bullet. It's a bit of a weedy bullet, I think. Um, I think it should be fatter and shorter. So if we stretch it like that, and a bit stubbier. And I'll just increase the Y a little bit. Might even want it a bit wider. That's just gonna... I don't know, I think it'll feel a bit better. Um, and... Yeah, let me just do some tests on the shotgun and see if it does need buffing. So, grab a shotgun. Uh, grab a railgun too, because I just changed the damage on that. So the idea with the shotgun is like, from back there... Yeah, I feel like that ought to take out the guard. That does. Railgun's great for these guys. It's also great for these guys. 20 ammo is not too bad. Like, that's enough that I've got to think about it on a level like this. It's still a really good weapon. Um, but now it's not the, the guard killer that it once was. Like, it's quite painful to try and kill the guard with that. Cool. Um, yeah, I didn't really notice the new bullet then, but I'm sure it was doing some good. <laughs> um, and there's a bunch of other balancing things I want to do. So uh, the kick on the the shotgun is crazy. <laughs> I'm going to reduce that down to like three, I think. Um, Uzi kick is also too high. It's, it's one right now. I'm going to make it 0.5. Um, maybe even the railgun, now that it's less powerful, it could be two perhaps. Um, and now let's make a new weapon. I said that... Oh, there's two new weapons I want to make, actually. Um, more than that. But the first one I want to make is... I'm just going to just do Control d to duplicate the Uzi. And I'm going to call this one a pistol. And it's going to have one second between shots. It's going to have accuracy of about 100. Um... I can't remember how our accuracy system works. <laughs> I, I know that sniper rifles have a thousand, like the railgun has a thousand. Um, and one damage is right, 150 ammo is fine, kick should be zero. Um, and the reason I'm making a deeply unexciting weapon is that I want to give it to our guards. Uh, I think, I've mentioned before, I think they're too powerful um, as combatants because then that's not their role. Their role is to make the stealth part harder, not to make the combat part harder. So let's just drag a pistol in there. Uh, I'm just going to copy the 
on the Uzi they already have. I copied the transform component and now I'm going to paste that so that it goes to the same place. And then I'm going to delete the Uzi variant. And the last thing I need to do is in the guard, they have a reference to their weapon, don't they? And it's going to complain it's missing now because I deleted their Uzi. I'm just going to give them the pistol there. So that's the beauty of having a weapon system where we didn't design these weapons as like extensions of the player. We just made them these, these universal objects that anyone can use. And that means that I can just give a guard one. And now he's quite pathetic. That might be too slow, actually. I think, I, I think I'll increase the rate of fire, at least. We don't have anything else that's that slow. Um, so that's for them. I also... Let me try this. I, haven't, I didn't do this in my practice, but I'm thinking about just giving that to the player as well, just so that they have a starting weapon. Um, let me see that. Uh -huh. Let me... Surely I can just reset that, and then it'll be in the right position. Yeah, it does. Uh, so we can add it to our prefab... Um, and then I think we can just add it to their, just make it their main weapon. And then my guess is that uh, when you replace it, it will be destroyed or dropped or whatever. Um, I don't think there's anything special that happens when we pick up a weapon in the world that, that we need to take care of. I hope not, anyway. Um, so let's check it works. It does work. Our game's suddenly running really slowly. Don't know why that is. Uh, oh, there is something wrong. The weapon UI isn't showing any information on this weapon. Well, and the whole thing is running really slowly. I don't know why that is. Um, let me uh, let me just quickly like disable that and remove it there. How do I make that none? Oh, here we go. I just want to see if that, if adding the pistol was somehow making something go slow, or if it's just my PC. That does seem smoother, doesn't it? That seems fine. Does adding a pistol to the player cause the whole thing to slow down? I'm just wondering what, um, if it's doing something weird, like repeatedly trying to pick it up. Oh! Uh, we do have a usable. Um, oh! While I'm here, I just noticed that the actual display name for the gun is set here, so we should change that there. Um, if this causes me any problems, I'll just abandon it and um, uh, forget the idea of giving the player a pistol, because I think we're going to fix this problem some other by other methods anyway. Uh, but the one thing I did think about is that uh, let's enable the pistol again, but take away its usable, because when you pick up a weapon's its usable component gets disabled. Um, I can't think why that would make the game cr crawl, nope, slow to a crawl, <laughs> um, but it seemed to, didn't it? Let's just see. If it happens again, I give up on giving the player a pistol for now and we'll do it in a future episode. Oh, this is fine. Um, so yeah, it doesn't show in the interface. Uh, maybe we're not going to worry about that for now. Did a real bad job of... Uh, no, we should worry about that because... Um, uh, because you can't see how much ammo you have left, which is a real pain. Um, so what's the best way of doing that? Um, it's when we pick up a weapon, set as main weapon, um, so the main weapon panel doesn't get this assigned. Uh, that's the only thing that needs to happen. So, I might just, I think it's as simple as just in start, not awake, but start. We don't have a start yet, so I just typed it and it auto-completed. Um, let's just see if we, if main weapon is not equal to null, then assign it to that canvas panel. That seems reasonable, doesn't it? We could do it for the secondary weapon as well, but I don't plan to give us two weapons at the start. Um, so it's not worth doing that yet. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. Alright, so now we've got a basic weapon, and what I wanted to do that because we have a sort of hidden fail state at the moment, where if you don't grab a weapon before you trigger the alarm, either because you blunder into a guard, or because you misunderstand what the game is about, and you think you just assume you already have a weapon, and... 
you grab all antiques maybe um, then you're completely boned <laughs> you can't recover from that you are dead there is no melee attack or anything uh, outside of stealth mode um, so it's a real nasty trick to play on the player and it's very easy to design to sit back and think well you know the player bought this on themselves they didn't pick up any weapons then you don't have any weapons tough like you should have thought about that but there's so much the player doesn't understand when they come to a new game that, like like I say they may assume they already have a weapon they may you know be really on our side and, and in tune with the game we're making and recognize oh I'm in a stealth situation and therefore not try to see if they have a weapon not try and press fire and experiment because they're like oh no you know I don't want to alert the guards which would make a lot of sense and be just the kind of mindset we want someone to be in and then we punish them for that by saying haha you didn't have a weapon so yeah let's just give them one um next okay so yeah so the next thing I want to make is very similar to the crystal it's the sniper rifle I'm just going to call it sniper um and I'm going to remember to change its let me double check I'm yeah I'm just going to change its display name down here What's the difference between a sniper rifle and a pistol? Damage. <laughs> um, it's going to do 15 damage, which is an insane amount. Nothing has 15 health yet, but I want to future-proof it. Um, it's not going to have 150 ammo. That's a bit crazy for a, a powerful weapon. Uh, but I do want it to be, have quite a lot, like 40 maybe. Um, fires twice every second. That's fine. Um, I'm actually going to say... Yes, I already uh, went and found a sound for this. So... Uh, it's by our old friend um, Mitch Orvath uh, has a sniper rifle noise that I liked and I'm just going to drag it into assets here and then on our sniper rifle on the audio source click the little target thing and ironically it's actually a pistol um, sound effect not a sniper sound effect but it's like just snipery enough that it works, I think. Um, and this is going to raise the question of how do we get this in the game? Because we haven't had to do that. Oh, first of all, I'm going to make the accuracy a thousand, not really a hundred. I don't know how much difference that makes, but <laughs> uh, I want this to be perfectly accurate. And uh, we need to have it actually show up in the game. We need to, I'm going to go to prefabs and double click level generator. And this is the list of weapons that, that things get spawned in. So every level has its own instance of the level generator, and they can have their own differences and things modified to them. But they all start with this as a base, and so we're going to be modifying the base a lot today. Um, and it will affect both, this, both the levels we have. Uh, so let's go to weapons and drag our sniper into the weapon list. And we've... We actually... Yeah, let's see if it pops up. Uh, we've got loads of weapon plinths on our first level, which is called level 2, <laughs> uh, due to video game development. Okay, so we've got a sniper, and takes out guards in one shot. Takes out these guys in one shot, too. And I'd say that sound is, like, just different enough to the pistol one. Yeah. Pistol one is just the easy one, um, and I think that's fine. It sounds pathetic, and it should. <laughs> Cool, there's a sniper rifle. Um, let's do something uh, more powerful next. So, I, I had this idea that I wanted to have like regular weapons and super weapons, and um, I had a sort of a concept of how those would be different. Like, regular weapons you'd be able to replenish the ammo, and the other ones you couldn't. Um, but having tested it now, uh, I don't, don't know if we need that difference. We'll see when we get to it, but uh, if I didn't already, I should run through what we're actually planning to do today. <laughs> um, uh, and also check the time, which is 19 minutes. Okay. Um, we've done the explosion damage fix. We've done weapon set damage on bullets. We've done the fatter bullet. Um, upping the shotgun pellets to do two damage. I might do that. Um, it could fire fewer pellets, couldn't it? Uh, pistol for guards. We've done that. Uh, so, rail shotgun, rail Uzi, sniper. We haven't done the fast bullet for the sniper. I'll, I'll do that at some point. Um, so most of these like super weapon ideas are just mashing together two of the weapons we already have. So let's do the rail Uzi first, because that's a fun one. Um, so that is going to be... I think I'll duplicate the rail gun. And rename it rail 
Should it be all one word? No, two words. Um, and change this to spay name. And then what is a rail Uzi? It's a rail gun that fires as fast as an Uzi. Um, so time between shots, 0.1. Um, and accuracy, what is an Uzi's accuracy? Oh yeah, actually I wanted to change this. Um, while I'm here, I'm gonna rename weapons that end in the word variant to just remove the word variant because it's just easier to see. Um, Uzi, I actually think the accuracy of the Uzi should be twice as much. Um, it's it's so inaccurate <laughs> at the moment. It's kind of frustrating to use for that reason. And the other thing is it makes it more like a shotgun because it's so inaccurate that the spread is, is only any good at very close range. And I'd rather these had a difference between them. So all of which is to say the accuracy of an Uzi is 10 now. Um, on the second three shots is 0 0.05. I've made this slightly longer. Maybe that's a good idea. Maybe it should be slightly longer. And damage, I'm going to... I'm going to reduce it down to one. So this is a nice case where um, uh, that damage thing pays off. It would really suck to have to duplicate the railgun beam and just to change the damage, especially because the railgun beam has a bunch of you know uh, unique behaviour. Um, is that everything? Yeah, let's see how that feels. Um, so we go back to our level generator, and let me. Let me try something that I have found useful in other projects. So this is our level generator. We're going to need this a lot. I've opened it up in an inspector window in the main pane, and then I'm going to lock this one. And that doesn't lock this one. So now when I click on something else, I get to still use the inspector pane as normal, and I can go away from the inspector pane here. Um, inspector pane sounds like a great noir character. Um, I can go away from it here, and I'll always be, have it at the ready. So... I want to drag a rail Uzi in there. And since we can do stuff like that a lot, that should be helpful. Let's see if I can just play. Oh, rail Uzi right away. Okay, here's what a rail Uzi feels like. <laughs> okay, I'm out of ammo. <laughs> I think I left it with the same amount of ammo as, um, uh, as the radio on, which is... Unfortunate. Yeah, it does not need to fire any faster than that, does it? That is that is a good old um, speed. Uh, but yeah, ammo twenty is a bit harsh. Let's we'll give it thirty. I am going to try it because it's a crazy powerful weapon. I'm going to try and keep the ammo count low, and ammo is going to sort of have a double effect um, once we add ammo pickups, which is another thing on the list today. Uh, so let's just take two of them actually, because that's that's another way you can get around the ammo cap of a of a weapon. <laughs> it just shreds groups of enemies so fast, it's great. I love what the, what it happens to the sound effect, because it, you only get the the very first part of it before the next shot interrupts it, and that first part is kind of like a sort of dull thud kind of thing. It just really feels like a like a powerful minigun kind of thing. Um oh this hasn't worked out. Uh I locked this inspector window, but it got unlocked, didn't it? That's unfortunate. I think it must have been when I opened the prefab, but I didn't expect that to happen. Because I use this this trick in my main project all the time. I have this thing called a stage list that I need constantly. Um, and I just leave it locked in that inspector window, and it never gets lost. Um, but it's not working here. So, uh, are the weapons? That one's already fun. Um, uh, I think we should do a shotgun Uzi next, uh, which is just a shotgun that fires as fast as an Uzi. Or well, it doesn't really. Um, shall we call it an Uzi shot? Yeah. Um, and write that in the display name as well. And we'll keep all of this. And we'll just make the rate of fire, secondary projectiles, 0.1, just like the rail Uzi. Um, and the amount of ammo, I think I'll give it 20. Uh, I'm sort of generally going for like half or a bit more than half of the regular one. Oh no, I know what I'm going to do. This one has 40. Oh, 40 is pretty good. And Uzi's have 150. All right. Yeah. I kind of want, want it to feel like if you pick a shotgun or an Uzi or a regular rail gun, 
you're sort of taking a long-term weapon. You're going to have this for a while. It's going to last you maybe a couple of levels. And if you take something crazy like an Uzi shot or a uh, Rail Uzi, then it's this big blast of damage that's just going to chew through stuff, and then you're going to be out. You're probably going to run out of this fight. Um, and that's the, the sort of risk-reward you're doing. So let me see if, if it survived this time. It did this time. Uh, so we've got the Rail Uzi, and now we're going to have the Uzi shot. Man, I've had great luck spawning them. Oh, uh, it looks like a shotgun. Oh, I guess that's good, yeah. <laughs> that feels amazing to use. <laughs> it's an absolutely ridiculous hail of fire. And now out of ammo, which, which feels right. That feels fair. Um, I love the way these things look. Let me just try to check out. Yeah, okay. They still block nice and good. Um, there's a little thing I want to point out that we, that we did last time that um, is maybe not ideal. Um, the... What's it called? Nav mesh agent. Uh, I forgot that it has all these things about radius and height. The radius is a bit bigger than the actual thing. I think that's kind of okay. Uh, the height is crazy, though. We shouldn't... <laughs> make it that high. I don't think it really has any any effect, but I just wanted to fix that. Uh, and for the fast swarmer, again, what I noticed in there is they're, they're avoiding each other quite a lot. Um, and I wondered if we should be making their radiuses smaller. Um, I have already changed that, haven't I? Because the oh no, sorry, it's inherited it from the from the base one. So um, let's revert that. And then the the tough swarm is actually probably a. Yeah, it's actually too narrow for them, so um, let me increase it. And the height doesn't matter, but anyway, just updating those. Uh, cool. So, uh, I think there's one more combination we can do, right? We've combined Uzis and shotguns. Uh, Uzis and railguns, we haven't combined shotguns and railguns um, for a rail shotgun, which I think is just going to be a rail... Um, a railgun that fires many projectiles. Uh, so number of projectiles, uh, we could try like six. Uh, probably leave it on the same damage. Um, accuracy is going to go down to five. And second string shots, I'll leave that at half. And ammo, 20. That's pretty generous. Um, that's very generous because... Uh, a rail Uzi has has 20, sorry um, just a regular railgun has 20 and this is way better, so let's just see how that feels, oh no, I didn't put it in the list did I can I put it in the list, yeah uh, rail shotgun I'm going to take a sniper rifle I'm seeing some slowdown again and I can't Imagine that that's to do with any change I just made, so I'm gonna forget about it. Uh, you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to change the display name, so we can't tell. I actually really like that um, it was such a good move to put, pl put not plinths, but the, the name tags on the floor. Um, that is really useful just to communicating things to the player. Why not just tell the player exactly what it is by writing it on the ground? And it also exposes bugs really quickly, like forgetting to give it the correct display name. You can see that as soon as you start it, because you can't find the damn weapon. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't need to change anything else. That looks like a rail shotgun. Uh, yeah, boy. Ten shots is surreal. I think it's going to be perfect for those guys, so I'm going to see if I can keep the fast ones at bay with a pistol. And then when it comes time to kill the big guys, use the rail shotgun for that. It should be really good for them, actually, because because they're bulky. Um, oh, here they go. Ooh, I want to get, like, a real cluster. <laughs> I mean, that's already very good, isn't it? Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a very good weapon against those guys. So... I think the ammo count's about right, actually. I think 10's about fair for that. 
Uh, Rail Uzi, I guess that would also be good against them. But the... So the Rail Uzi is very versatile because it, it's also good against mobs. Um, so is the shotgun, probably. But not the, the thin, fast, light mobs. Um, oh no, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? Damn, that's really satisfying. <laughs> So, uh, to let you know kind of where I'm heading with some of this, um, I would like to... I plan to add a mechanic that will incentivize you to kill enemies quickly. Um, and I think that will combine really well with these like high damage, low ammo, low ammo things to tempt you into trying to pull off a, a massacre, basically. Um, Uzi shot. That wasn't an Uzi shot. Damn it. Um... Oh, it was. Sorry. Sorry. I forgot what an easy shot was. I just love that sound so much. I'm dead now. Um, I could have gone back and picked up my pistol, actually, couldn't I? Uh, but yeah, those are feeling really fun. I like all of them. Um, I want to add something else, though, which is pickups. So a lot of this is about making um, the choices of what to take from the plinth more interesting because previously it was basically take the railgun and then we realized that was overpowered so we gave it super low ammo so then it was like take a, a reliable weapon and then take a railgun um and now with all these options i think that's more interesting the sniper uh so from playing around with it in practice the sniper becomes a really good uh like fallback weapon like you want to keep a sniper and then something else is a really good thing to do because sniper is, you're almost never going to run out of ammo for it because it's super powerful so it's very efficient per shot um, and that's also the difference between the the uh, rail shotgun and the it's really hard to remember what they all are uh, the rail Uzi um, because rail Uzi is a great burst of damage and it's really reliable there's no gaps between shots it um, uh, works for everything but rail shotgun is firing a whole bunch of rails per ammo and so its ammo goes further or its ammo yeah, translates to damage much more efficiently um, yeah, let's just make a little box that you can pick up. Um, where will I make it? I think I'm just going to open up uh, maybe level 2, since that's the one we play around in. Um, and I'm just going to create, right click here and create a 3D object that's a cube. I'm going to make the same mistake I've been making all along, which is to not um, give it its own uh, object at first. Uh, it will be nice and easy to fix that later if we do want to. But I want this to be, yeah, box shaped. Something that can sit on a plinth happily and uh, look like a pickup. So we need a material for it. Um, I will take... I think I might as well duplicate one of the metallic ones. It, there's no particular reason for it to be metallic, but it just at least might help distinguish it from the ground. <laughs> um, and the first one I'm going to do... Actually, let's do a health box first, because that's the easiest uh, thing. They, the code for the, the two things will be very similar. Um, but uh, the health one is just slightly more straightforward. And if I select the cube now, get on here and drag the health pickup material to it. It's now green. Kind of shiny green. And what does this need? Let's call it a... I don't want it to be green, sorry. <laughs> uh, I want the ammo box to be green, the health one should be red. Ooh, it's nice to be able to preview it. Maybe kind of pinkish? No. Red. Uh, maybe lighter red? That's also pink. That's good, I don't know why I'm obsessing over this. Uh, let's call it a health health pickup and it needs two things it needs a usable it's going to be a thing we can walk up to and interact with um, and it's display name will just be health and then we're going to give it a new behavior which will just be called health pickup and so the really nice thing about our usable system is that when we want to create a new item like this we're going to have health pickups and ammo pickups we could have other kinds um, and they need very little behavior on them because they don't need to know when they get picked up. 
um, because the user bill is going to handle that. So all we need is a public void uh, replenish health. And all it's going to do is say if the player exists, I mean the player should exist because they just picked us up, but we better check. Um, let's actually write some code there, Tom. Uh, not equal to null. Then references references dot the player dot now what we actually want to do is we want to change their health which is not a player behavior thing the player behavior has a health system like everything else and so we want to get its health system health system and then we could do something like uh, change its current health to its max health the max health is public uh, its current health is not I think it would be better to let the health system handle this let's not have this bit of code make assumptions about how the other bit of code works. Let's just make a public function that is public void replenish health and it's just going to say current health equals max health. And then if we ever change how that system works we don't have to worry about updating this. Uh, we will just run this function. So if the player exists find the health system and tell it to replenish their health. And then if that happened then we also want to destroy ourselves. Our work here is done. We should go away. Um, we I might also need to do something to hook it up to the alarm system. Um, but for now, I'm going to drag it into our assets folder to make it into a prefab. Then I'm going to delete it from the scene. We could just leave it there to test it, but I prefer to uh, put everything into the level generator because we're going to have to do that anyway. Uh, might as well do it now. Um, and let me just put it in twice. If you want to make something more likely, you can just add it to this list twice, and that's fine. Uh, oh, I'm going to be playing level two, which I don't want to do. I want to save level two, and then open startup. Okay, did we get any health? Healths. <laughs> it's a really horrible thing to say. Uh, no, I added two to the list, and <laughs> none of them spawned. Uh, but I can just hit new game. There's a health. Uh, okay. So, I need to take some damage, but I also need to survive, so I better probably take a different weapon. Maybe I'll take the sniper, actually. Uh, let, let you see me. Uh, oh, oh, damn it. <laughs> damn it. This is going badly. Um, yeah, maybe I should just take some damage on this level and then win the level. Uh, Easier said than done to actually win this level. Because we added tougher enemies and we didn't reduce the number of enemies, so there's just a lot going on now. 71, can I do this? This might be tricky. Um, Alright, is there a better way for me to just take some damage but be right near some health? I think it's just going to be... Shoot me. Shoot me, damn you. <laughs> it took too long to shoot me, so I don't have time to get the health afterwards. I really need to actually take the damage. Um, nope, no health. This is not the best way to test a thing, to be honest. <laughs> I've not done this in the most efficient way. Please help me. Okay. And I can't pick up the health. Okay, so it's not working. <laughs> Alright, I should have just left it in the damn scene. I don't know why I was fixated on putting it in the... in the generator. Uh, let me just put it in the scene, and that way it won't disappear. I forgot that the alarm system would make the thing get locked off, so that was an extra disadvantage to doing it that way. Uh, I'll drag it near a spawner, because that should mean it won't get obscured. And... Uh, yeah. I'm just thinking... I kind of wish our level was easier. Um, should I just reduce the number of enemy spawners? Because we're not testing enemies now, so... Um, I just go to the level generator, and it's four enemy spawners at the moment. If we just do two, that's enough, isn't it? Um, and then load startup and play. Okay, there's well, there's some health on the pedestal, but I also want it on. It should be just lying around somewhere, right?
Nope. <laughs> that also hasn't worked. Both methods are bad. Actually, the twist ending. Okay. Yeah, you just can't pick up health at all. Um, why is that? I tested this before, and I didn't hit this problem. It's got a usable, right? Oh, sorry, I forgot to hook up the usable. Um, it needs to actually be told to do something, and... So you click the little plus there, then you have to tell it what object it's going to do it on. That's us, so we drag the same object in. And then there's a drop-down list to say health pickup and replenish health. That's why that didn't work. I don't know why that second time I um, decided to get myself injured first, because I'm not even testing that. I mean, it's debatable whether you want to be able to pick them up when you're at full health, because it's a waste. Uh, so we could prevent you from doing that, but I don't want to get into that really. Uh, you've got your reasons. Oh, here's one. So if I take that antique maybe first. Uh, we'll need that health pickup. And it works. Um, I'm fully healed. The health bar disappears when you're at full health. That's why that. Wow, the shotgun's very powerful. <laughs> I wonder if that's too powerful. Uh, that crash is not anything to worry about, that's just because I've got a, a prefab open already. Yeah, I didn't increase the shotgun damage, did I? Um, okay. So, our health pickup works, and now I'm just going to duplicate it, and call it an ammo pickup. Yep, rename the file. Uh, in materials, I'll duplicate the health pickup material. And I'm just going to change its color to sort of dull green, that kind of thing. Uh, call it ammo pickup material. Fail three times at trying to type a capital letter. And drag that over here. Okay, that's fine. I don't care enough about how it looks to <laughs> uh, do any more than that. And we'll create a new script called ammo pickup. And all that's going to do is going to be real similar to this. And so I'll probably copy the health script. I feel like I'm still waiting for it to open. Okay, here we go. Uh, now instead of replenish health, it'll be replenish ammo. And we still want to check whether the player exists. But when we find that it does exist, um, we want to do something to its weapons. So we want to, for each of its weapons, check uh, whether they exist, and if they do replenish their health. So it'll be something like, um, uh, if their main weapon exists, then replenish the health. But I happen to know that it gets a little bit awkward um, to do that twice, because you have to check each one. For each one, you're going to check if it exists, and then replenish its ammo. So instead, I'm going to create a new... Actually, it's not going to be public, it's just going to be a void. Um, uh, refill weapon. And you have to pass in a weapon behavior to this function. And so for each one, we're going to say, if weapon is not equal to null, if the player actually has a weapon in this slot, then weapon dot ammo is going to equal max ammo, but we don't have a max ammo variable yet. So let's do that next. Um... Oh, uh, just to complete the thought, I will uh, will say refill weapon references dot the player dot main weapon, and then same line of code but secondary weapon. So it's going to do that twice. But the script itself, we can't write it yet because weapon behavior doesn't have a concept of max ammo; it just has ammo. So once ammo starts ticking down, it has no memory of what its max ammo was. So there's two ways to do this. We could either make our current variable be the max ammo and create a new current ammo one. Um, and I think I'll do that because that's what I did in practice. And there's there's a few little uh, pitfalls with both approaches, uh, but I know the pitfalls for this one, <laughs> so I'm going to do the, this one. And so when a weapon is created, its current ammo should be set to the max ammo. We don't want to set those two things separately. Nope. Oh, I see, the, the original one's just ammo. Yeah, I could rename it to max ammo. Um, uh, but I'd have to do that formally serialized as trick, which always just feels like a bunch of mess. Um, so I'm not going to. Um, 
because we have many different weapons, all of whom have set an ammo value in the inspector. I don't want to have to go through and redo those. Um, that's why uh, renaming it uh, could be costly unless you do the formerly serialized as thing. Um, so what I need to do, actually, is find every usage of ammo. Uh, so I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to say Find All References. And everyone who currently references ammo probably wants to reference current ammo. <laughs> if they currently reference ammo, they really want to reference current ammo. Um, so this is the one that checks whether we have enough ammo to fire. Of course, that, that's about current ammo, not about max. If this is the bit that reduces ammo after we fire. That's also about current ammo, not about max. Um, and then lastly, the weapon panel uh, is going to read in the ammo value and show it to you. Again, they want current ammo, not max ammo. Um, so that's just three references. We updated them all. It's done now. Uh, if you do it the other way, then you've got to go and set the... Um, yeah, if we, if we created a new max ammo value instead of creating a current ammo value, then we'd have to go and copy all those values over. Uh, so this should be a better way of doing it and now we can finish writing our ammo pickup because all it's going to do is say weapon.current ammo equals weapon.ammo so that will refill it uh, the thing we've got to remember is that of course this usable needs hooking up to this new script we've written um, and in fact, it even needs the object reference setting. So drag ourselves into there, and then go down to ammo pickup and replenish ammo. That ought to work, except the name is wrong. <laughs> so that's just going to regenerate everything. So now we can go back to our level generator and drag in an ammo pickup. I think at this point I will remove that duplicate health pickup. I was just trying to increase the chances for testing. Uh, now we'll just let it spawn whatever it wants. And uh, hopefully, this should be getting close to being done. Uh, so, to test this, we'd need to lose some ammo. So, let's take an Uzi shotgun um, and a rail Uzi, why not? Uh, Uzi shotgun would be the best for killing this guy, wouldn't it? <laughs> Uh, okay, I've spent some ammo now. These weapons are ridiculous. And now what I want to do is find some health. Uh, nope, I want to find some ammo, don't I? <laughs> Forgot what I was testing. Uh, here it is. Ammo. Both our weapons completely restored. Perfect. The only thing is, I have noticed, uh, the alarm doesn't go off. Alarm, lot. The alert level is not raised by me doing that. So that must be something about, because it still works for weapons and for antiques, I think. So I'm curious why that is the case. I actually, I noticed this in practice, but didn't go around to actually fixing it in practice. So we're into uncharted territory now. Uh, I don't want to look at how weapons do it. I want to look at how antiques do it, because, I don't know, it just seems like a closer point of comparison. So B collected. Oh, OK, it just we just manually say it. Um, that does make sense. I was thinking it would be something that my usable would do, or that, that the plinths would do, maybe. But the... So every plinth has a reference to the thing that it's on it. So a plinth can kind of monitor whether its thing was stolen. Um, but to be honest, I think the way we are, we're already doing it is fine. It's just uh, if picking something up should raise the alert level, then in its pickup script, you've got to raise the alert level. Uh, nothing too complicated about that. So we could, there's an argument that health pickup and ammo pickup should be, should have a, a parent class and they share behavior. And then if we had that, we could sort of have a be picked up method in there and both of them could call that. I think it's so simple, just raise the alert level and destroy yourself that we don't need that yet. If we were going to have like five or six of these, then it would make sense to go to a parent class. To be honest, I was sort of pleased that we didn't have to make that kind of structure because the uh, usable script does so much work that as long as they both have that, that's the behavior they share. Uh, okay, let's just test that.
so now I don't even need to spend any ammo because I'm only testing whether the level raises and it does. And let's get whatever this is. It's a rail shotgun. I can barely read it because the name is so long. Uh, and I don't want the other thing to be on there. pistol is terrible. <laughs> I hate it. I want to hate it. You should hate it. It's the weapon you're supposed to get rid of. Cool. So now, uh, Uzi shot. I kind of want to rename these because I keep getting confused about what they are. <laughs> I keep thinking Uzi shot as a railgun thing, which is, it's the only one that doesn't have anything to do with railguns. <laughs> I do love this one. The, the hail of fire it creates is just wild. And then rail shotgun for these guys is extremely satisfying. Oh my god, two shots for the whole mob. That's fantastic. There's, there is, I as a designer resisted putting help, hit points in my games for ages because uh, I, there were so many games where it was unsatisfying to just chip away at something's health bar, like there was no reaction. It felt like it, it sort of depowered the the action of shooting them or hitting them or whatever you're doing, like whatever it was, it hurt the feel to have something that didn't react to it in, in some tangible way. Um, and I was like, I'm not doing hit points. Everything's just going to die in one hit. Um, and over the years, I've slowly come to realize what's good about hit points. And it's that <laughs> you can create this spectrum of damage and you create this sort of efficiency, the scope for efficiency, basically. Like you give the player a way to deal damage in a really efficient way. And that's, that's what we're getting at here now is that we're just get, reaching that point now that we have enough weapons. Um, there's a really inefficient way to tackle these situations, and there's a really efficient way, and I've chosen <laughs> death. Oh my god, did I get them? Did I get everything in two shots? I only had two shots, and I got it all. That is amazing. This game is brilliant. <laughs> so I'm taking a sniper rifle. So I could, I had two extravagant weapons there. Um, ooh, we have a bug. Uh, if I pick up the weapon I dropped, the alert level raised, I, I thought I'd seen that before, and I have. Okay, so replenishing both those. This is this is the dangerous path. Is those are two great weapons. One ammo pickup fully replenishes both. So that's a lot more efficient in alert levels than picking up a new copy of each weapon. So that's what an ammo pickup is for. But they, since they're both low capacity, I'm really taking risks here. And if you dither and change your mind, you you um you know, if you pick up a weapon that you then don't end up sticking with. Um, you're sort of it's sort of inefficient because you're you're raising your alert level more than you need to do more than you needed to, but um, on the other hand, that is lying around for the rest of the fight, and that could be useful if you run out of ammo and you have to just, you know, try and survive. Uh, one change I'm probably going to make is I don't like that it auto-progresses you to the next level, because you might have left something lying around the level that you meant to go back and pick up, so I think we're going to have to make it so that you voluntarily move to the next level, even if it's just, like, hit a key to do it. Um, uh, that's probably the simplest way to do it. So I'm sort of dithering. I think I might take the sniper, because I just want a really... Um, a really reliable ammo, not an ammo hog, the opposite of an ammo hog. A bit extravagant to use it for these guys, it's the worst use of it. <laughs> but it does work, and uh, I actually think those guys are not fast enough, or maybe they're for a level 1 enemy, I guess it's fine. Um, it's really fun to have a weapon that's like so powerful but low ammo, you have to sort of just really be be canny in how you use it. What is this? This is a rail shotgun, so that's a very, that's the, the perfect mob killer for those big mobs. Um, I don't think I want that. I think Uzi shot is fine. Uh, the balance of, I think this level one is programmed to not have any any antiques on it, so I can't get any score, which is slightly unfortunate, because that's what I want to do right now. When I've, my reward for already having um, good weapons should be that I get to just load up on antiques. Probably should use sniper rifle there, right? That wasn't the best use of that. Uh, yeah, let's go get, let's get some health. I needed some health. And an antique. And the Uzi shot is real low, uh, so I'd like to replace that. But my sniper is fine still. Ooh. 
Um, maybe I replace it with a rail Uzi. And then take another antique, take another antique. Did I get the third one? Wow, I did. Uh, okay. So, sniper is still best for these guys. And it's very good for guards. Perfect shot. Okay, that was pretty efficient. Is there anything else? Oh yeah, there's more of these guys. Hmm. If I can get them all in a line, rare losing might be more efficient. Because sniper's one shot per enemy, no matter what. Oh boy. I think it's going to work though. I think that is more efficient. Awesome. Man, I'm enjoying this game. <laughs> we actually kind of got to the point where I kind of want to keep playing. But I shouldn't, because you're watching me, and just weird after a point. Um, Alright, did we do everything? Oh yeah, I was thinking about guards dropping pistols when they die, so that you, there's always a weapon lying around, um, in case you run out. I think just starting you with a pistol has kind of solved that problem, but we could do that later. Um, and, yeah, voluntarily moving to next level I think will be important. Um, but yeah, everything else we did, right? Shotgun. I didn't end up buffing a shotgun. I think it feels fine. Um, rail Uzi we did. Rail shotgun we did. Sniper. I didn't make the sniper bullet fast. I'm not really missing it. We could do that later if we feel it needs it. Um, just means creating another a duplicate of the bullet and increasing the, the move speed on it. Um, Uzi shot we did. Uh, we rebalanced the regular rail gun. Ammo pickup, health pickup, all done. We added the sound for the sniper rifle. Um, the... The creator of that sound is the same as uh, a sound we're already using, so we don't need to add anyone new to the credits. Um, yeah, that was it for episode 28. Cool. Uh, so next time, next time I want to uh, save your high score and show you, uh, you know, how close you are to it. So between sessions, we'll be recording your highest ever score. I'd like to do something to give you a sense of how close you are to beating it, just to get you to care more about score. And I also have some, some new ideas about what the score is. You know, right now it's just a count of antiques, but I think I might go in a direction of it being money and different things give you money. And yeah, this, this idea that killing enemies quickly should, should increase your score um, is something I want to work on next.